Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Guest today, Matt Daigle. Matt, thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate you coming on. And can you tell us, first of all, where you're calling in from and what you do for a living with Rise? Awesome. Thanks for having me, Matt. Super uh, excited to be here and uh, and chat with you today. So uh, my name is Matt Daigle. I'm a CEO and founder of a company called Rise. We're based in Canada, although most of our business is in, uh, is in the US, uh, but also in Canada. And uh, we're an online home improvement store. Think of us as uh, maybe the, the whole foods of home improvement, if you will. Uh, so we focus exclusively on sustainable home improvement products that had been vetted and researched. Uh, and uh, our company uh, essentially started educating people on this stuff. So we built a ton of content uh, and expertise uh, around the topic and then eventually realized that we could serve people by actually uh, shipping them products every day by working directly with the manufacturers of these uh, these amazing products. So yeah, you can find us at uh, buildwithrise.com. Awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, tell, us, tell me a little bit more about your background. I mean, what got you interested in uh, you know, doing work in this space? And I saw on the website, the little bios, obviously you can a first time father doing your own home renovations with which obviously makes sense finding some pain points there so what were those some of those things you noticed out there on the market that they're looking to do a little bit better or maybe differently with this brand yeah for sure my journey starts back in uh, like 2014 ish uh, my background was in tech i was part of a company uh, early days of a social media monitoring company called radiant six which uh in the heyday of social media was a became a kind of a household name when we uh we sold to salesforce.com this was back in like 2011 and uh that was my nine to five I part of that rocket ship story in the early days, an employee 50 something or so. And by the time we sold the company, we were like 350 employees. So it was a, an amazing story. And it, you know, that, that was my nine to five essentially. But in my evenings and weekends, I took up a love for home ownership after I bought my first house and uh, ended up renovating it and uh, got into, you know, DIY and, you know, all the all the fun stuff, architecture and design. And then so after I flipped my first house, my second house was complete fixer upper, like I got in way over my head, I didn't really I don't think I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and, and I was in a bit of a rush to renovate it because I was about to welcome my first kid to the world. And um, so we renovated for six months moved in my first daughter, Audrey comes along just a month after that. And then like everything changed for me at that point, I also picked up my first power bill after the reno and I realized it was unfortunately identical to the power bill before the reno. So felt like we had totally failed. And, you know, now I'm holding my infant daughter in this new house and I'm wondering if even it's safe for her to be around these freshly painted walls that could be off gassing, who knows, like there's all these new questions and new values that are coming up as you're, you know, kind of growing a family. And the internet didn't have a lot of answers for me at that time. And you got to think this is actually maybe two or three years before climate change came into mainstream media like it is today. So so I, at that point, I got real, like my curiosity peaked. Uh, I got really into what at the time was like the green building movement. I saw that it was, it was booming and there's still tons of people moving towards, you know, better solutions for their homes, but it wasn't really accessible for the average homeowner. Like how does the average person have a home that's better for them, either for their pocketbook, for the planet or for their health. And, and that's really what set me off on my journey. I, I'd studied entrepreneurship in school. That's how I, that's the, the concentration I did in, uh, during my MBA. But I don't think, you know, leaving school, I knew what I wanted to do. So after this, this experience at Radiant 6, I then uh, eventually jumped ship to pursue Rise full time and try to solve that problem of, you know, how does the average homeowner have a, a better home? Yeah, no, it's amazing. I love that story. And could you tell me a little bit about, I suppose, your experience and, you know, kind of building your uh, foundation of products and things you're able to offer through the site and wherever else, the other avenues you might be selling this stuff is. I just kind of get your foot in the door with these manufacturers to kind of say, you know, I'm sure it's a very, you know, with like, you know, home decor and, uh, you know, fixtures for bathrooms and things like that. I feel like it could be a very traditional, like, you know, they, they have their channels and they're good with that. I feel like it's a hard thing to penetrate. So how did you kind of go and, you know, get your foot in the door with some of those companies, which I see on the website, there is a lot of SKUs and products on there now. Uh, but how did you kind of get started in those conversations and, you know, bring them to the table to say, hey, I'm like looking to do this a little differently or kind of building this movement of sustainability and things. What was that experience like at the forefront, I suppose? Yeah. So, so our company has been around since 2015. And so, 
Whether we like it or not, we started this company almost a little bit backwards. So we started by building a platform that would educate people on sustainable home improvement. Because in the early days, you kind of have to almost show people that there's a better way. And sometimes it might mean paying more, sometimes it doesn't. And But there just can't be a compromise. And so we ended up uh, hiring writers and researchers. We built a ton of content around this. We launched the platform in 2017. And by two year, about by 2019, we were already welcoming millions of folks to the site. Um, and so so we became an authority in the space, but we hadn't monetized it yet. We want what we wanted to do was to monetize the traffic um, and monetize it through professionals by connecting this traffic to professionals or through manufacturers and essentially through brand marketing of some sort. So in the early days, we thought we would actually just like monetize Rise through uh, almost like a SaaS play and software as a service. So when we tried those avenues and we realized they were not must haves, they were nice to haves. And then when we actually started listening to our readers who kept telling us the same thing they were saying like they come coming to rise reading about you know products materials techniques on how to build and they were all kind of saying the same thing like yo you've got me convinced on this product but like where do i buy it i have no idea where to buy it like don't tell me about the company like tell me where i can buy the product and uh you know, it became apparent to us that, you know, there's a huge gap in the market. No one's really gone after. And that's why I call it the the Whole Foods, a home improvement, because it's a little bit like, think of it like walking into your grocery store. Like for me, I go straight to the health food section because I know those products are better for me. They've been vetted in some way, but the same thing doesn't exist in a hardware store yet. We just, you know, feel like, or we figure that if they're in the hardware store, you know, if they're at Home Depot or, or Lowe's or wherever, like, they should just do the trick, right? When in reality, there's a whole subset of products that are you know, catered to you saving money, catered to you um, having a healthier lifestyle, and uh, and also uh, products that are just better for the planet that are low carbon footprint or um, save energy as, as you use them. So um, with all that said, you know, for us, we actually started listening to the customer or to the reader. Um, we got our foot in the door with manufacturers because uh, we were able to go to them and say, hey, we have millions of folks coming to Rise every day they're reading about your product. Um, doesn't it make sense that we also just sell your products at the same time? And and so that's what we did. You know, we we ended up uh, launching in 2021, in August of 2021. At that time, we had about 20 or 30 brands or so. And now, you know, that's almost three years ago, we're up to 230 brands and counting. We now have over 12,000 products across our stores. And you've got to think, these are all products that we, we've taken time to vet, to research, to make sure that they fit the bill. We have a, a pretty strict manufacturer criteria that we abide by um, so that when you come to Rise, you really don't need to think twice about whether or not that this product is good, whether it's going to last a long time. We've already researched all of that for you. Yeah, it's really fascinating kind of taking the angle of like becoming a thought leader in a space first before you even have anything to sell. It's, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a, very, a very unique approach. I mean, it seems like something that just kind of happened organically for you. I mean, I'm sure that was just like a point of emphasis and like, you know, passion for you, it seemed like just to do that education. And then you also, I can imagine in doing something like that, that's getting so much traffic, you also don't want to be the site that's like all the information is just leading you to a link to buy that's like an affiliate link so you can make money off the products right so it's a really again i'll just say interesting and clearly very effective approach to you know what you were trying to do so yeah i appreciate you sharing that because it's really it's, it's really unique and valuable i think i suppose uh, one thing i was going to ask that you touched on a little bit as well is like what kind of criteria do you actually look for specifically when you do think about a partner whether it's a service partner that maybe is you know doing some work on behalf of like the products that you're selling or the actual products themselves what do you kind of look for in a manufacturer to know that that's going to be the right partnership for you yeah as far as manufacturing Manufacturers go, we look at folks who just really kind of walk the talk because, you know, we know that there's so much greenwashing happening. You know, everybody and their dog just seems like everybody is just trying to get in on this, you know, this green thing or whatever you want to call it that, you know, because a, a lot of homeowners and professionals are gravitating towards products that are better um, for your health and the planet, and they're going to save you money over the long run. So at a very high level, that's where we start. We focus on products that either are serving you from a health perspective. So and from that, from that angle, think of products that impact like your air quality, your mood in your home, uh, even your water quality. And then on the money side, think of products that not necessarily only just save you money as you use them. So like think of a, an LED bulb, for example, or maybe a mini split heat pump. Those are products that just kind of save you money over time. Also products that are, you know, low maintenance or low replacement costs or that are super resilient. So you don't have to replace them very often. Those are the, the products that really identify under the, the wealth umbrella. And then lastly, 
obviously on the planet side, for us, it's all about, you know, it can be renewables, it can be regenerative, it can be anything that's going to lower the embodied carbon footprint of your home has, you know, obviously a big impact in terms of how we look at products that impact the planet. So that that's how we look at it at a very high level. I, I can go down into details in terms of, you know, there's things like certifications that we look for, for example, is your product third party tested? Is there, you know, what benefits do you, does your company do aside from create great products to uh, to touch on those three things? So for example, manufacturers that maybe have, uh, you know, become a, a B Corp or a certified B Corporation, or maybe a manufacturer who uh, makes sure that they don't have any waste or that treat their employees fairly or have really good policies. Those are all things that, you know, are important to us and kind of give an extra checkbox. Now, all that being said, there is no perfect product. There is no perfect company. They're all, it's all just a balancing act really. And there's been several times where we've had products where the team has to kind of do a huddle and say, are we a go or no go on this? Because it is so tight. It is such a balancing act that we need to make sure that, you know, the right products are making it to the store. But, but and then there's the products that are just like a hard no. Like I can tell you most manufacturers where we uh, say a heat pump or something like that, chances are if they are a manufacturer of heat pump, they probably also make a natural gas. And so on the natural gas furnace side, all those products are a no for us. Any, you know, any gas powered product for Rise is, uh, is a no fly zone. Then uh, there's other products that are just, you have to weigh, you know, where they're made or are they impacting your health? It's always a, a balancing act. Hey y'all, it's Dan Melnick, the CEO of Zing. And I wanted to share a special offer for all of our listeners. Right now, if you need software development services, we'll give you two weeks of a free trial. Do you need to update your website? Do you want to build a mobile app? Do you want to update something that you've been working on for a long time? We've worked in a high-level technology like AI, machine learning, blockchain. So shoot me a text, 817-874-2208. Thank you. Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense. So fascinating. And I suppose to that kind of same point, we're getting so much website traffic. I, I'm currently, I'm sure still, and while we're still just kind of an informational website, with so much customer interaction or just like you know, reader interaction that you were getting, what are some of the biggest, I, I suppose, misconceptions that people have about, you know, like what is actually green and things that maybe can cost a little bit more upfront, but can actually save you a ton of money in the long term? What are some of those biggest like misconceptions or like something, I, or just things I guess you would uh, advise somebody if they ask, like, what's the best way to, what's like the, the, the best change I can make in my home like today? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a great question. And I could answer this uh, kind of different ways. I think there's still the old adage for a lot of people of like green has to be more expensive. It has to be really complicated or ugly. All those things have been debunked and it's not really a thing anymore for the most part. So I think we're seeing that attitude towards maybe older generation buyers. But then other things like I, I think for us, I, I believe what's really maybe put us in a different bucket than a lot of other companies out there is that we sort of tend to lead with values. And that's the same thing, the same way that we sell our products is that each one of our product pages, each product listing that we have, we take the time to actually go through and say, what are the actual benefits of this product? And we list them in like easy to understand. Here's the reason why these products are on rise. I believe the same thing with sustainability in general. Like what's the actual purpose and feature of this versus just trying to sell something by saying that it's green. You'll, you know, you'll see those types of product listings on like on Amazon to pick on Amazon for a second, but products that are sold, you know, they come from China mostly, but are also just, they're ticking the boxes. They're trying to get the consumer to buy something by saying something that's really ambiguous. Like this product is really green or will save you a lot of money. Okay. But like why? Buzzwords, right? Buzzwords. They're just mm -hmm. using, try to sell you on things. But having done the research, have you actually delved, like dove into like why product actually better? And it's apparent to see that it's just, there's still a lot of consumers right there that just kind of glance over those, those details. So I, I think that's one thing is that you've got to lead instead of leading with sustainability, lead with like, what's the actual value and benefit that you're extracting from the product, and then the rest will fall into place like the better, you know, when you associate a quality product or, or material in the build, building sector, chances are it is a, a more sustainable product. If you say it's a quality product, chances are it is more sustainable than just the average. So they're kind of synonymous. And it's just up to the buyer in terms of, you know, is it important for Matt to find a product that's really good for his health? 
health, maybe has asthma or is chemically sensitive. So he wants to make sure that he's buying non-toxic paint for his walls. But maybe this mat, maybe it's more about, well, I just want to make sure that I do my part to save the planet and uh, and focus on products that are embodied uh, energy. And so that's why we try to leave the decision up the buyer to say, hey, like whatever's important to you, these three things, health, wealth, or planet, we've got you covered. And it's just up to, to them to make the decision. You know, it's so fascinating. I love the perspective of kind of putting the functionality first and just letting the you know, the other sides of it, the sustainability, the carbon footprint side of things just kind of like sell itself along the way when you realize much better functionality and lifetime value you're going to get out of these products, even without those things. And then and like realizing it's also included when you're, you know, signing up for something that, you know, you're going through with Rise it makes a lot of sense. I, I quite like that perspective. I think that, and I think I can kind of maybe open some people up and we maybe are not like super open minded or super progressive thinking as far as climate change goes or as far as, you know, maybe some other things go, sustainability side or maybe just aren't as knowledgeable or whatever the case might be. I think that really opens the door for people who maybe are open minded, but just not super knowledgeable to be able to say, oh, this is great. If I can do this and this is exactly what I'm looking for, you know, all the better, right? Of course, you're going to have those people who are obviously looking specifically for those solutions that are very specific about what they want and how they want to do it. Uh, they kind of already have that passion behind them, but I think that really great perspective on that. And it's probably attributable to a lot of your success, I would think, especially in the US where, you know, yeah, as I'm sure you know, working in the US market, it's black and white with uh, a lot of things on that in that department. Whenever you talk about climate change or uh, things that can be even slightly partisan can be very uh, polarizing. So I think it's a really good perspective, especially being in the US market here. So and then Matt, one question I always love to ask everybody that comes on the podcast, just being, you know, if you could go back to I know you said your real launch of like, at least the product line was 2021. Obviously, we've been doing the website since 2015. If you go back and, um, you know, start this business again, I suppose even even when it was still just like an informational website in 2015, you can go back and give yourself any one piece of advice if you were to start this business again. What do you think that piece of advice would be? Oh, that's a loaded question. I mean, I don't know that I believe in in like mistakes. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that would think, you know, hey, like if I had to do this differently, how would I do it? Or um, would I do everything the exact same way? I do believe like there's a reason why we are where we are. I believe that there's a reason why it took us longer than probably the average uh, company. You know, we've really only hit our stride in the last three years. But now it's uh, we're on a growth path and that's really exciting. It's nice to get to that point. I would say, you know, don't underestimate how long it takes. Don't under underestimate the amount of sacrifice and effort that it's going to take. Persistence is what's going to keep you going. Like, you know, I, I think that's really what sets apart most entrepreneurs is just grit and a tenacity and being able to hang on and also rebounding from, you know, tough situations and cash crunches and all the things that make entrepreneurs entrepreneurship, the thing that, you know, it gets a lot of eyeballs and clicks, but it's also, it's like the thing that, you know, every, everybody praises, but not everybody wants to do. It is unforgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if it was easy, I think everybody would be doing it, but it's, it's worth it. That's what you got to tell yourself in the end. You really, you know, you pick that one thing that you really, really want, I guess that that makes you different uh, than everybody else and focus on that one thing and you keep going and eventually it'll lead you to greener pastures. I I, I don't know if that's helpful or not or answers your question, but no, uh, it, it very, very much is. And I think it's actually great advice because with what you're doing, I mean, even just us having this conversation, I mean, your passion for what you're doing here is like super clear, right? I think that. That's a really important prerequisite for finding that passion and grit and tenacity to, to stick something out for five to six or sometimes almost seven years before you even get the product launch to really see that through. I think if you don't have that, I don't think any sane person is making it through the entire initial product development phase of starting you know, an entrepreneurial venture like you have, unless you really care about what it is. So to your point, and even a step further than your point is you may find the passion in just doing it, even if it maybe was something that you were maybe doing for the money, you just thought it was like a really lucrative idea. But at the end of the day, if I, I think if you don't have that like just really like fire and desire for what it is as well as like that grit and tenacity i think those two things coupled together is like the real prerequisite for success and you're probably not surprised here it's actually a very common answer i get to that question all different types of entrepreneurs so um you know when you hear it for the 50th time over 200 ep episodes of a podcast it's not really anecdotal advice or evidence anymore so i appreciate you being a part of that conversation as well i think it's actually one of the most important pieces of advice is that because i think a lot of folks listening are entrepreneurs are very very early on in their stage as entrepreneurs so that insight is super valuable actually so i appreciate that too and then Matt, just want to ask you uh, one last thing is basically just, you know, if we were to speak a year from now, where do you kind of see things in terms of the business? And uh, you know, where are you kind of seeing the most like areas for acceleration for you or, you know, any new that you are, it's kind of on the horizon for you guys? Yeah, a couple things are really exciting for us uh, happening this year. And one we're just about, we're, you know, uh, just about to announce. So I think by the time this, this will be released, we'll either have it announced uh, already or it's about to be. One thing with growing this company the last, uh, especially in the last three years since we opened our stores is starting to get some attention. And now, it's really time for us to start focusing on the brand. So up to this point, we've really focused on just sell, sell, sell. 
well. And, and now it's time to, yeah, we want to keep selling and more and more of it, but also focusing on the company and the values of the company and really putting ourselves out there. Something that, you know, we haven't really done in the last three years. So one of the things that, that is coming right up here is that we recently signed our first celebrity endorsement deal, an exciting one, a gentleman named Brian Baumler, who's uh, an HGT. I don't know if that name rings a bell with you or not, but Brian's an, an HGTV host, quite, quite well known. He'd be Canada's number one HGTV host, I would say, probably, and has, you know, made a, made a living now in the, in the US as well uh, with several uh, TV, hit, hit TV shows uh, down there as well. So he's actually joining us not only as a spokesperson, but also as a shareholder, which is really exciting. And Brian's really an educator at heart. And it's what he spends a lot of his time doing being, you know, kind of a celebrity contractor. He spends a lot of time telling people about how best to build. And uh, that's really where we found our, our synergies with him. And so he'll be joining us. And, uh, and so you'll be seeing some Brian and Rise magic happen over the next little bit. And then we are actually just in the midst of launching our own brand of products. So I mentioned that we work with 230 plus manufacturers. Uh, that's opened a lot of doors for us. And we are now just about to, we're probably two months away from making a formal announcement and starting to get to ship product. But we are bringing our own brand of products to market. We it won't be under the Rise na uh, name brand. It'll be under a, a separate name, but we're going to be launching that first on Rise, but then uh, through other retail retailers as well. So really excited to, uh, to announce that. And the exciting part there is that we'll be able to offer products across a wide variety of product categories, products that, you know, we obviously working with these manufacturers feel really good about new formulations, um, new products. So really stoked to, to get that out there. But yeah, this year is all about growth for us. So maybe that's a, a little bit of a preview of, of what's to come. Awesome, man. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And Matt, I just want to say thank you again for coming on, man. I really appreciate your time and expertise and insights and entrepreneur, but also in your specific space, obviously. So yeah, I just want to say I wish you the best of luck and continue success in everything you're doing, man. I think it's really important. It's obviously a super valuable service to anybody who's doing home remodels or just, you know, doing things for themselves and their own family. So I really appreciate what you do. And uh, yeah, just want to say um, uh, thanks again for coming on and uh, yeah, really look forward to staying in touch as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. Really, uh, really appreciate it. Great conversation today. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everybody.